dance abundant. Unfettered love, sculpted in divine joy, asks for dance abundant, reminding us that clinging, though posturing a certainty, too, too often limits creative fire, quelling journeys new. Good morning. Welcome to Roncesvalles United Church on Sunday, November 22nd. It is Reign of Christ Sunday. That means it's the end of the Christian calendar and the start of the Christian calendar. It means that ordinary time is over, so I can ditch the green stole I've been wearing for months. And just for today, I can put on a white one. Because the color for Reign of Christ Sunday is white. It's the start of a new beginning. It's like a clean slate, kind of, as the Christians look ahead to a new year. So that's why Anthony's playing Old Lang Syne. We're ushering out the Christian year that was and looking forward to Advent beginning our new year next week. Reign of Christ Sunday is spelled Reign, R-E-I-G-N, and it's supposed to signify that the reign of God is everywhere in the world. I remember years ago, a friend of mine saying, she spells reign of Christ, R-A-I-N. She says it's a time to stop and remember that the reign of God's love and the grace falls on all of us and everywhere in the world. So whether you spell your reign of Christ with R-E-I-G-N or A-I-N, welcome to Reign of Christ Sunday, one Sunday before we start the new year with the Advent season. Thanks, Anthony. I'm going to make some announcements now. The first announcement is keep those teacups coming. We're going to pause and we're going to have a look at my lovely assistant showing what we've collected so far. As I hope you know by now, we're going to be taping teacups into Christmas trees this year. Sweet Pea Flores is once again donating a beautiful Christmas tree for us to put outside our church. It's going to light up the light lives of everyone on the street. So in exchange, we're giving Sweet Pea teacups. They're going to use them for their famous teacup flower arrangements. And we want to say thank you by filling this table with teacups. So go to your cupboards, go to your great aunt, find us a china teacup and saucer and bring it in. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Hey, Megan, do you like poetry? Of course I do. And do you love Margot's poetry? I love Margot's poetry. Margot's poems have started us off every Sunday for months now, and we're so grateful. Margot's created this new book called, what's it called, Megan? Hope Is, The Hope. Pandemic Poems. That's right. It's a collection just to get us through the pandemic, and it's more than a poetry book. It also includes a workbook, so you can work out your feelings and your thoughts about this difficult time as you read Margot's beautiful poems. How do you get it? You call us at the church. Sid, can we see the church phone number? Thank you, Sid. Call us at the church. Send us an email. We'll make sure you get a copy. It's only $25, and $10 goes to a worthy cause. So far, Margot has donated $500 from the sale of these books to our ongoing meal program. Thanks, Margot, and thanks everyone who's going to give one of these as a gift this Christmas. And if you're looking for another way to celebrate the Christmas season with generosity, our meal program is always looking for food donations. We need cheese, we need bread, we need uh, deli meats. Call up Lisa if you're not sure what to bring, or just bring it along to the church. We would love to have it. Thanks for all of that. And I do have to announce that we are going to stay online for the rest of the Christmas season. It breaks our heart, but I'll tell you what tipped the scales for me. I was in the car last week looking forward to having in-person services today when I suddenly heard on the radio the province and the city together asking people who celebrate Diwali in the Sikh community not to get together this year. And I thought, we need to stand in solidarity, all of our faith groups. We need to do not the thing that we want to do, but the thing that we should do to keep each other safe, to be responsible and to show that together we can get through this time. So in solidarity with so many other faith groups that are not able to meet together, we'll stay online, sharing wonderful music, 
beautiful words, and a great deal of spirit. So don't miss any of the Advent services. We have amazing people and guests for you to share, to, to enjoy. Okay, we're going to get started with our opening service, and Anthony's going to provide some centering music. Thanks, Anthony. wish by author unknown at the sound of the tolling midnight bell a brand new year will begin let's raise our hopes in a confident toast to the promise it ushers in may your battles be few your pleasure many your wishes and dreams fulfilled may your confidence stand in the face of loss and give you the strength to rebuild may peace of heart fill all your days. May serenity grace your soul. May tranquil moments bless your life and keep your spirit whole. to do the Christmas stories instead, of course. But I want to recap the books that we have done on our great Bible adventure so far. So let's see if we can name all of the books of the Bible that we've done so far, in order, of course. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Today, it's the book of Judges. Judges is a transitional book, kind of. In Judges, the Israelite people have 
left the slavery of Egypt, crossed the desert, gone into Canaan, and started to establish their society. But they're not quite in the promised land yet. I mean, they are physically. They're in the land that God promised to them. But they haven't yet formed a stable government. They haven't yet created a society as they would recognize a real society. They haven't yet appointed a king. They're instead in this transitional period where each tribe has appointed some kind of judge, who is often not a judge as we understand it, but a military leader. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. What judges has to talk, tell us about transitional times. Times when we feel like we're in the middle of something. We've left where we were, but we're not quite where we're promised by God we're going to be. We're somewhere in the middle. First, I want to ask you a real New Year's eve type question. Has anyone here ever made a New Year's resolution? Yes. Yes. I'm seeing some nods among our few people who come with us to come out to watch us record. But I can guarantee you that there are very few people in the world who haven't at least thought about making a New Year's resolution. I used to say I make New Year's resolutions every year and I keep them all. Mostly I keep them in a bottom drawer where I don't have to look at them and remember that I didn't keep any. In fact, most of us apparently who make New Year's resolutions keep them less than three weeks, which is very discouraging. It's really hard to make a change, isn't it? We can see where we want to go. We can see where we've been. We can know that we're moving from something we don't want to something we really want. But that time in the middle can be so hard. And it's not just keeping a resolution that's hard. We find the same in the start of anything new. At the beginning, we're so excited. A new baby, a new job, a new relationship. COVID's coming, we got this, we're gonna be strong, we're gonna get through this, we will stand together and come out better. I said that myself. But then what happens? Well, the child grows into a teenager and we no longer recognize them as one of our own. We want to get them tested because we're sure they cannot be biologically linked to us and behave this way. Or the job goes on and we find that we don't like some of our coworkers and maybe our boss gets on our nerves. Or perhaps the new relationship runs smack into the reality of who we actually are. Or maybe it's this long stretch of COVID, which caused us to open our church one day in September and then be told that the responsible thing was to close it the next. This long stretch of COVID, which has made me so excited to be with people again on Sunday morning, and forced us to do the responsible thing, which is say that this Christmas, we won't be together, except online. It's that long stretch in between, between the excitement of beginning something with great intention, with energy, with enthusiasm, and reaching the promised land, the end that God has promised us, which is bringing us through to peace and hope and a better world. It's that middle part where it is so, so hard sometimes not to get discouraged, to keep the faith. And this applies to just about everything that we undertake. The book of Judges is, as I say, a transitional book. The Israelites have had the excitement and the triumph of leaving Egypt and laying down their years as slaves. They have crossed the desert, which was really hard, a sharp awakening of what was in store for them in this promised land journey. They have fought and bickered among themselves and with God. They have starved, they have worried, they have fallen short. But finally they reach Canaan. They reach the promised land, the place where they believe they're going to be settled forever as God has promised. And even then, they find themselves still in a transition period, in a kind of middle ground. They find themselves a group of 12 different tribes ruled by 12 different leaders. There's not a lot of cohesion. They're still fighting wars with people. They're still struggling to find their way. They know that God will bring them into a peaceful and settled society. 
but they're having trouble keeping faith in this middle ground. The book of Judges, as someone pointed out to me this week, is actually quite a hopeful book. It talks about several stories where human beings devote themselves to going God's way, things go well, human beings get discouraged, human beings get angry, human beings think it's just taking too long, human beings think, okay God, this can't really, but what you have in store, as you said, things were going to work out, human beings fall prey to their fear voices, and human beings mess up, and then human beings pick themselves up and go back to God. This story happens over and over and over in the Bible, but it's very marked in the book of Judges, where in one book, we see this story retold through many people's lives, many times. The book of Judges contains some wonderful stories. There are unexpected heroes. There are people who live the way they want and get what they deserve. We like that, don't we? Megan pointed out to me that there's a wonderful story where a woman drops an, uh, a rock on the head of a man who really deserves it. So anytime we think women are hard done by in the Bible, and they are, turn to the book of Judges. You'll get a different picture. There's the famous story of Samson and Delilah. You know the one. Samson was a great Israelite warrior. He had the strength of many, many men. He fell smitten with Delilah, who was from another, a, a foreign country altogether. And she finally wormed out of him after many times of asking what the source of his strength was. It was kept in his hair. So one night while he was sleeping in, with his head in her lap, she cut off her hair and ended his strength. I will confess, when I heard that story in Sunday school, I thought Delilah was the heroine of the story. I thought, wow, she used what she had and she got what she wanted and she saved her people. I was told by my Sunday school teacher that I had missed the point entirely. But I still think, yay Delilah, way to go girl. The book of Judges contains so many of these stories. And all of them have a piece in the middle. They have a promise of God, of where life is going to go, and how life can be, and how we can live in it. They have the, uh, the end result, which is the person coming back to God and finding that they receive everything God has promised. And they have the part in the middle, where things go wrong, because people become discouraged, they become disappointed, they simply think that it's taking too long, or they feel that what is happening cannot possibly be part of God's plan. Perhaps the most vivid of these stories in the book of Judges is about Deborah. Deborah was one of the judges of the 12 tribes. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, wow, a woman was a judge, a leader in her community, you're right. It's unusual in the Bible. Deborah sits under a palm tree, we are told, and people come to her to, be asked, to ask about disputes they might have. Who owns this sheep? Can I park on my, you know, uh, camel on my neighbor's ground? All the commonplace things that people would need to have resolved by a mediator. And Deborah, we are told, is very wise. Her husband even says so. Then one day, a soldier comes to Deborah. His name is Barak. And Barak says, Deborah, we have to go fight a war. And I am too frightened. Now I picture Deborah under that palm tree thinking, are you kidding me, God? Are you kidding me? First of all, I am being asked every day to solve people's problems, to come up with answers for them, to be just and fair, when sometimes human problems really don't have anything but a messy answer at best. She must have felt quite put upon by the number of people who came to her. I'm sure she often felt discouraged and inadequate. And all she really wanted to do, I'm sure, was stay under that palm. God, I am doing enough. I am barely getting by. And here comes this soldier saying there is a battle to be fought and expecting her to do something about it. That's the middle ground. That that Deborah is feeling is the middle ground. And at risk of sounding far too grandiose, I'm going to say that I felt like Deborah this past week. When we started this time of COVID, I remember standing in this sanctuary, speaking into that iPad and saying, we are going to get through this. We're going to do this beautifully. We are strong. We are people of faith. We are going to be the positive light in other people's lives. 
When they lack hope, we're going to tell them how great it is that people are working together. When they get discouraged, we're going to give them the faith of God in their lives by demonstrating what it looks like to stay the course, to stay strong, to be certain that even though this wacky thing that's happened to us makes no sense in our world at the moment, we know there's a reason. We know there's a reason. And we know that at the end, God is going to bring us through stronger. That's what I said months ago at the beginning of COVID. That's what I got excited to share last week when I thought we would be having in-person services. And that's what I lost in the middle ground when I realized that we had to continue to slog away online. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a wonderful team that supports me. We have amazing guest musicians. We even have a few people that come out every Sunday, every Wednesday to watch our recording. But it's not the same, is it? And honestly, I remember sitting at home a few nights ago thinking, I don't have it anymore, God. I don't see what the purpose is anymore. I am too discouraged to keep going. I don't have the energy to get up and talk into that iPad once more and try to be encouraging and share the faith that you have a purpose for us in this. I don't have it anymore. And then I remembered the story of Deborah. It is true for all human beings that at the start of any enterprise, we feel energized. And it is true for any human being of faith that we know that God will bring us into a good end. He'll bring us back to peace. will bring us back to faith. will bring us back to a sense of meaning in our lives. But it's also true that we get discouraged, that it feels like too much, that the grieving of a loved one goes on too long, that the loss of a job worries us so much we can hardly think that someday we might find employment again. That we worry about that child and cannot imagine them ever being well and happy. Whatever the project is in our lives, we worry, we fret, and we get discouraged. And I got discouraged. And then, as I say, I remember Deborah. Deborah had more than the ability to share with people an equitable solution to where to park their camel. Deborah had an underlying, complete, unshakable faith that if God had promised, God would deliver. And what had God promised? God had promised them stability in their government. God had promised them a land where they could grow and thrive as a people. God had promised them a sense of community built out of people who had been slaves, people who had been downtrodden. God had promised them those things, and in this difficult middle ground, Deborah repeated those promises of God. So when Barak the soldier came to her and said, now we need something else, Deborah, now we need to go fight a battle, Deborah said, well, go and fight the battle. And Barak said, I will go if you go with me. And she did. This woman who so much had been asked of, so many unexpected things had happened, so many things that she could never have expected God would want, got up, and not being a soldier, walked into battle, and they won. They won. God delivered them victory. And not only did they win, but the Bible records this amazing, triumphant song of Deborah in the book of Judges, where she glorifies God and says, I knew you would bring us through. I knew you would give me strength. I knew that there was nothing that you have asked of us that we are not able to do, and I knew that God will fulfill God's promises to us. You know, as I say, it's easy to be excited at the beginning of something, but I think it's hard for all of us to stay faithful and excited in the middle, to bring the energy to the project in the hard times. It really is. I have wondered where God can show us the beginning and promise us the end and not tell us what we're in for in the middle. And yet maybe the truth of it is that all we need to do is have faith. Maybe, in fact, the Israelites wouldn't have gone if they'd known what the desert would look like, if they'd known how hard it would be, if they'd known how many battles would still have to be fought. 
Maybe Deborah wouldn't have become a leader of her people if she'd known she was going to end up leading people into actual battle. Maybe I would not have had the strength to get through the first few months of COVID or recognizing everyone else needing the strength if I had known how hard it would be. But I don't need to know that. All I need to know is that if every, as every moment of discouragement arises, God will give me what I need to get through it. God will send me helpful people with kind words. God will send me a light in the sky that reminds me that that light can shine from my heart into the lives of other people. God will send me good words or beautiful music. God will give me what I need to walk this journey. I may get discouraged, but I will get up again and recommit myself. Because I know that faith is easy at the beginning, and triumph will come at the end. But it's that faith in that middle time that really makes the journey meaningful. Every time we recommit ourselves to the promise of God, recommit ourselves to helping others on the same discouraging journey, recommit ourselves to the promise that we know is there for us, recommit ourselves to the remembrance that God sends us all the time the things that we need to get us through the middle. So I'm grateful that this was the week that we read Judges, and I read about Deborah. I echo her victory song, although victory hasn't quite come for us in the COVID time. I echo her song as I say, this Advent we are going to share light. Let's put on the Christmas music early. Let's be happy that stores are already showing bright lights and tinsel. Let's walk down the street knowing that we are going to look back on this as the Christmas that we gave to each other hope and strength and joy and light. The year that it didn't matter what was under the tree or whether or not we could have people together. It was the year that we got through together that difficult middle ground, staying hopeful, staying strong, and sharing the promise of victory, of triumph, of future peace and health, and return to perhaps a different and better world that God has promised. So that's the book of Judges, the story of Deborah, the story of my week, and why this Advent I'm going to celebrate Celebrate, celebrate. We're not at Christmas yet. We're not through COVID yet. But by gosh, God is with us in this middle ground. Thanks be to God. Our Creator, you know our fears, our concerns, our needs, our hopes. We offer these prayers shared by many of us. We pray for people in long term care. Caroline. Mary, AJ, Lori's mother, Donna's father. We pray for Verna, for Cora, for Beverly, for Albert, and for Yolanda. May they feel your presence. We pray for restored health for Sid and Linda's daughter-in-law, Amy. May she know that many people care for her and are praying for her as she begins chemotherapy. We pray for Lorene for strength and peace. We pray for the family of a 12-year-old boy who has died this week, a victim of gun violence. We are dismayed by gun violence in our city, the lack of respect for life. May his legacy be the recovered health of those who have received his donated organs. We pray that communities will address the causes of gun violence among young people. May a peaceful and fair solutions be found to put an end to violence in Ethiopia, Thailand, and all the countries in turmoil. We pray that two Canadian men jailed in China will be brought home. We pray for containment of COVID-19. Keep us focused on safety for all, respecting protocols that will protect communities. This virus challenges us for safe, warm shelter and food for the homeless for prosperity for store owners who supply our needs, for peace for those who are isolated and lonely, for children and teachers to progress through their days safely. We pray that American leaders will justly govern with honesty and compassion. 
We thank you for people who offer small kindnesses to make a difference in our lives. Those who make us laugh, make us stronger and more able to go on. Thank you for everyone who supports the work of RUC and other faith communities who offer support and service to their own communities. We are grateful to Sid, who films and produces our online services. We wish him a happy birthday, and a happy birthday to Emmett and Charlie Evans also, who have been part of these services on occasion. Hear our prayers. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to sharing the next four weeks of Advent services with you. We do have wonderful music coming. We're gonna have our Christmas tree on. We've got lots of great things to share. And so that's it for Reign of God Sunday. Next week, Advent, sparkle, stars, Christmas stories. We are so ready for a little happy. We'll see you next week. And may the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon us everyone, now and forever. Amen.